I've highlighted a few criticisms that I've had for Season 3 of Star Trek Picard. Generally, I've been positive about it, but there's no denying that shows like this are a product of the era of television we're living through. I am, of course, referring to the particular storytelling format that is preferred on streaming services, and that format is the Mystery Box. Now, to be fair, it can work very well. There's examples I can cite where it delivers really great television, Season 3 of Picard being one such example. There's also a British sci-fi police drama series called Life on Mars from 2006. It ran for two seasons and told the story of a British policeman named Sam Tyler, who, after being in a car accident, suddenly wakes up in 1973. He's having to grapple with dealing with the policing procedures and political incorrectness of the era. It was followed by a spin-off, which I think was even stronger, and it lasted three seasons. The show was called Ashes to Ashes. Two wonderfully written series well worth watching all the way through, so go and do that. I recommend them highly. I watched the first season of Stranger Things when it first came out back in 2016, and I found it immensely compelling and suspenseful, but ultimately... I tired of that constant serialized storytelling where you're basically being strung along from episode to episode with an ongoing plot and you're being drip-fed information regarding a wider mystery. I have to differentiate Mystery Box from other forms of story arc serialized formats. For example, let's take a look at two other Star Trek series, Deep Space Nine and Enterprise. Both of them contained a serialized story, but neither of them were Mystery Box. Deep Space Nine's Dominion War story arc took place over a couple of seasons, but it still maintained a mostly standalone episode format, and it wasn't Mystery Box based. You knew who the antagonists were, the Dominion, you knew what they wanted and why the war was happening. Similarly, with the Zindi arc in Enterprise third season, you knew why everything was happening. You knew the Zindi built a weapon to destroy Earth, and Enterprise was assigned to track it down and stop it. Like DS9, there were still a healthy dose of standalone stories in the season, but overall, the Zindi plot focused on the struggles, twists, and turns within the conflict, which was fully laid out to the audience from the start. New mysteries and challenges could be thrown in along the way, like who built the spheres in the Expanse and why the Zindi believed humanity were a threat to them, but the story didn't hinge entirely on the answers to those questions. But Mystery Box is very different. It functions entirely around keeping the audience in the dark throughout the season's run. There's no standalone episodes, and it's all about maintaining a mystery regarding a character or characters, or regarding an important or central plot thread or conflict within the story. Very little of the mystery is explained until near or at the end of the season. The audience is given scraps of the mystery, just enough to keep them invested, and each episode ends on a cliffhanger to tease them for the next installment. In many respects, Mystery Box has a lot in common with a kind of murder mystery novel. The problem, of course, with Mystery Box is that because so much of the story and so many reveals are held back until the end of the season, it means sometimes it can result in two problems. The first is that some story arcs lack sufficient content to fill an 8 or 10 episode season and thus result in one or two filler episodes where nothing much happens and that serve to pad the story a bit. And the second problem is that there's usually an episode or two where there has to be a huge amount of exposition or info dumps in order to explain stuff. Mystery Box can be done very well But the problem is that it's now become overused and the reason it's become the norm these days is because of the nature of modern television. The streaming service model is to blame here. Studios want to get people signed up to subscriptions for their streaming services and there's no better way to do that than to get audiences constantly coming back for more dopamine than a TV series filled with tantalizing mysteries where you're desperate for answers and you can't miss a single episode because you're addicted to sitting through till the end in order to find out how it all plays out. It can feel a bit cynical, to be honest. It should be noted that it's easier to set up an engaging and exciting cliffhanger mystery than it is to solve it in a satisfying manner. I believe standalone storytelling is actually technically superior to serialized mystery box storytelling because it takes more skill to tell a full story, beginning, middle and end, 
in just 45 minutes. To bring the audience on a character's journey, set up a conflict and resolve it in a television hour, that requires some talent. Also, you can watch a single episode in isolation without the need for too much prior knowledge, whereas you can't really watch a single episode of a mystery box season because they're all connected, so you have to watch the whole season. Furthermore, in the case of Star Trek, the franchise has always thrived in its original standalone format. This is because each week can be completely different. One episode can be a bottle-based story on the ship, the next can be on the planet, another time you can tell a more political or cerebral story, you can do a horror one week, you can do a comedy the next. Of course, character development can also be easier to do in standalone format because you can give one particular character complete focus for the entire episode without having to dance around an overarching villain or narrative. Standalone format offers far more storytelling variety over the course of an entire season. Recently, we've seen series like Star Trek Strange New Worlds return to the franchise's standalone roots, albeit with some character plot threads still carried across the season, such as Captain Pike's knowledge and fears of his ultimate destiny. There's certainly a time and place for Mystery Box, some stories just really lend themselves to that style. My issue here is, in an age of modern binge-watching television, it's kind of become the default now. Picard Season 3 is very well written, and some of the strongest Trek we've gotten in years, but I think there was still some potential this season for a couple of standalone episodes to break the cycle a little bit. Certainly the Raffi Wharf B-plot could have been cut out entirely, that could have saved heaps of runtime off the season. In the third episode, when Vadik uses the portal weapon, there could have been an officer on the bridge who had a line like, Captain, the energy configuration of the device appears to match that of a portal device reported stolen from the Daystrom station several weeks ago. The Rolaren episode could have still fit in without much of an issue. And then all that was needed to keep the plot moving forward was for Rolaren to say something like, Oh, by the way, Picard, according to my intelligence sources, the changelings also stole something else from the Daystrom station. Boom. You're done. The middle of the season could have had a standalone episode or two. Given the nature of television these days, Mystery Box isn't going away anytime soon. But perhaps a better balance between serialized and standalone can be struck in the future. And I think it's important to remember that just because a story is serialized doesn't mean it has to be Mystery Box. Both Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel proved that time and time again. Each season had an overarching story arc, but they still maintained a mostly standalone format. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you think of the Mystery Box storytelling format. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.